Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to Tapped In Indie Wrestling. I'm your host, Heath Mulliken, joined by producer extraordinaire, co-host, the man with all the plans, Mr. Nick McDaniel. Nick, how are you, my brother? Good, man. Uh, great week. We got a bunch of stuff going on this weekend, it looks like, in wrestling. And I know you had a busy weekend last weekend. So, Yes, yes, yes. So, for people who may are listening to this show before they listen to the national show, give us a give us a flavor of what's on the national show this week. A uh, little bit of a chamber talk, obviously. That was last week. A little bit of the stuff going into, uh, obviously, like what we've seen develop so far and uh, – for the mania plans uh we actually dove in deeper than i thought on the q4 you know call mm. that they had uh i, I thought it was going to be a blurb we were talking about a couple minutes we ended up going for a while wow. um we I, here's a tease for you aew's biggest hire to date and why i think so um so that's a good one uh, obviously we talked a little bit about sting's last match that's this weekend as well um and you know a few other things obviously so lot, lots of good stuff this week so we do have a a pretty big national story that affects independent wrestling uh if you saw it the other day really cool thing patrick scott who's a young wrestler from the carolinas uh has wrestled all over the carolinas has wrestled really all over the country but uh was a pwx guy was in uh tag team with chance riser and it was announced this week he has been hired to be an assistant writer on SmackDown. And that is just awesome. This kid bet on himself. Uh, I was telling somebody yesterday, um, it may have been Mark, and Mark was trying to remember, like, okay, who is Patrick? I'm like, well, Patrick Scott is a young man. I've never heard anybody say anything negative about him. Always positive. Always, you know, just – I, no one was surprised. I'm not surprised that he got this position because he's a hard worker and obviously we, sh- we wish him the best. And that's just, that's just really cool. Yeah. It's, it's look, I mean, anytime anybody makes it, especially like when you saw them at day, like, look, I mean, somebody, uh, you know, like I know he's not in his hot street right now, but like when Austin theory made it to, you know, to TV, I mean, I remembered, I told somebody, like, I saw that kid at, like, 19 wrestling in a, you know, uh, the Felker (laughs) Center in Monroe, Georgia, Um, you know, and literally when I just turned and was like, oh, yeah, that guy's going to be a star. And everybody's like, yeah, he's going to be. And that's kind of ironic that it was that fast. You know what I mean? But, yeah, so it's always cool to see somebody that you've seen from the ground up take off and be successful. Look, even if he's not as a talent, if he's as a writer – even still, it's still, you know, kudos to the kid. Yeah, and here, here's here's uh, a really cool thing. Really, to get an opportunity as a talent in WWE, there's so many hoops, you, and you really have to know somebody. Yeah. But, but for this job, this is a job you can go on their website, you can apply for. He took, he gambled on himself. And I, I, you know, just pretty, pretty incredible, pretty amazing, and uh, that's a win for WWE, and I, you know, it's a win for the Carolinas as well. It's a loss, I mean, because we don't get to see him wrestle anymore, but uh, we're all very, very happy for him. Uh, speaking of the Carolinas, man, I had a full weekend uh, on su- uh, Saturday. I was up in Charlotte, North Carolina, for Ashe Wrestling. This is the promotion that was uh, started by Darius Lockhart. And he made his return. This was um, a standing room only crowd. I mean, the bleachers were full. Ringside was full. And literally people standing around. A a legit sellout, whatever you want to call it. The vibe was great. The energy was great. It was not a wrestling crowd. Uh, Maybe 50-50 wrestling crowd. But they were into it the whole time. Um, They used lots of talent that's not used heavily in the Carolinas. Uh, like Shug D was there, but Shug D's really not a Carolinas guy. He's more of a Georgia guy. He had a great match with Caprice Coleman. Uh, and it was great to see Darius Lockhart back uh, in the main event against Darius Carter, who I'd, I'd never seen live and was so impressed with this guy. As a heel, he hit all the right notes in that match. His mannerisms with the crowd, uh, it was just a really fun show, and 
they've not announced uh, their next date yet. Um, but best of luck to them, man. It hey, listen, show. and I think that's a great look at it. By, by all stretch, the last that when they did the big uh, venue that they had, um, you know, some people took it as a it was a negative that they like they had a great crowd. They were just in a venue that was too big. Right. And right. so I think it should like the transition into the smaller venue greatly went to their favor because you completely ch- changed the vibe and the look and all of that kind of stuff. I think it was a, it was a very smart move by them. And let me tell you, uh, this show was at a middle school. I would 100% go back to a show there because it's just in a really cool area of Charlotte where you could park at the school and there are shops and really nice restaurants right within walking distance. I ate at the restaurant right next to the school. And so if you're a wrestling fan in the Carolinas, I would, again, if they run that school again, that's a cool vibe. Um, and it was, it was just a really fun, it was a really fun show to watch. Uh, then I turned around on Sunday. I had never been to an AML show. I had been to AML as part of WrestleCade. Mm-hmm. But I had never been to a standalone AML show. And again, they had a tremendous crowd. They had to bring out extra chairs. Um, Their show, it was nonstop for three hours. There was no intermission. Eight matches. Boom, 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 boom. Couldn't hardly catch my breath. The main event was a scaffold match. A little bit different of a scaffold match between Brad Attitude and Colby Carino. And... Uh, one of the cool things about this show, because we, we talk about wrestling fans and we talk about young wrestling fans. There was mm-hmm. a kid, there was a kid sitting behind me and he did not shut up or sit down for three hours. <laughs> and and there were parts of it that were absolutely annoying. Okay. But I, I went in not really knowing a lot of the talent and this kid was giving me the scouting report on all of it. And he was talking trash to everybody. And I'm going to say, Tracy Myers, if you've got a seven, eight-year-old kid who knows your entire roster, who knows everything, mm. that's that's a win. And they there was a lot of kids. There was a lot more kids there for AML than the Ashe show. Um, but I'm interested to see where AML goes. Uh, they, they were kind of finished up some angles at this show. Um, so we'll, we'll see that, you know, they, they're starting to make WrestleCade announcements. And, uh, I just want to thank, we're hoping to get Tracy on, uh, but I want to say thank you to Tracy Myers, his hospitality to me. He, he came up to me personally. He knew it was, he yeah. knew it was about three hours to me. And that's why Tracy's one of the best. He just, um, he hands down is one of that. When we talk about guys in wrestling, there's a few that had, that are in this category of, He's not a wrestling guy in the sense of the word. He's, you know, he is promotional. He Like, he's promotional with his car dealership. Like, it's, you know, so he gets it on a business scale. Obviously, look, WrestleCade, you know, the success story it's become. Um, and you're right. Every year I make it a point to go up to Tracy, shake his hand, tell him, hey, we appreciate everything you do for the fans. It's a great job. Uh, but, yeah, I think there's, like I said, there's a handful of when we think of guys, you know, in our area that are like that, I think we probably know the first two that come to our head and he's right. one of them, you know, that's kind of the thing. So, yeah, he just, uh, just a class act and, um, yeah. And I, and, and, you know, I'm looking at the schedule. Hey, when can I get back to an a- AML show? Uh, you and I, the weekend before, uh, got to go down to, uh, disruptor their, mm-hmm. their great return. Um, Man, uh, I had very high expectations, and this show exceeded. The venue was incredible. Um, For people who don't know a lot about Buford, Georgia, Georgia, and Tannery Row, the Tannery Row L House, kind of explain to them what that area of town is. So uh, Buford's an old town, you know, obviously. Um, I always joke with people, like, if you ever watch Six Pack, the the old Kenny Rogers movie, (laughs) They actually, like, when they're driving through the town hunting for Breezy, I, I, it came to my mind after we talked about it later, uh, it, when he's looking for her, he's driving up and down this little small town. Okay, that's Main Street, Buford. That's kind of the road I took you down. Uh, so, and the Tannery Alehouse is in an old banner and Tannery factory 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a huge venue that they've since converted into bar slash restaurant. They do uh, concerts, you know, like cover bands, etc. cetera. Um, and listen, if somebody like Zicky Dice is in the building and goes, dude, I love the vibe here. I love this look. I love the feel. That that's that's an endorsement enough, in my opinion, that you're like, okay, they're on to something really cool here. Um, and like I said, so that's just the venue part, right? Um, that it, and it's funny. Um, tables, not just a bunch of chairs, so you could eat food and sit there, dine and drink and eat. That, that's I think it's a huge plus that they have on a, over a lot of wrestling promotions. Yeah, it was super nice. We were, our table was on the stage and I literally, if I had, I I don't have long legs, but if I had put my legs out far enough, I could have propped my legs up on the bottom rope. And so we literally had a closer than front row. Mm -hmm. uh, And then the action was tremendous. I, you know, your first match was Slim J and Barry Morales. And, as, as you know, I've been doing podcasts and getting into wrestling. I look for that opening lockup. A lockup in a match, you can watch that and you can kind of tell oh, yeah. where it's going. When Vari and Slim J, I, and maybe there's video of it, when they locked up, it kind I knew it was going to be good, but it kind of like, that was, that's great lockup. Yeah. Um, it was a great night of action. We got to see some folks we had not wrestled before. We saw a great women's match. The Joe he had a little bit of comedy with uh, Joey Janela, CB Suave, and Jake Manning. And, uh, and I'll then throw the in Manning. a disclaimer here. Yeah, I'm not generally a big comedy like wrestling fan. Right. That match just sucked me right in and had me laughing, and, and I was sold. Uh, so kudos to CB Suave for one. Because, uh, listen, I, I know this sounds crazy, but, but C.B. Suave, he, you know, he's he's primarily a Georgia wrestler, primarily. Mm. Jake Manning, national, right? Joey Janela, national. He could have, like, the moment could have been bigger for than, than C.B. Suave, but he didn't let that happen. He right. completely delivered and showed he belonged in the ring with those other two. That was what I thought was awesome. I think I told you this. We pull up. And CB Suave is in like this white mink coat or something like that. It looks like a white mink coat. He is dressed to the nines, just walking into the building. Yeah. And and I just was like, I wasn't as familiar with him. When I see his name on a poster now, I'm gonna say, How do I get to this show? Yeah. Um, and so Disruptor, I think they obviously they want to tweak a few things. Great, you know, over 400 in the house, which is tremendous. Uh, over 400, and shall I say it, premium prices. Yes. Uh, and then the main event, it was really cool to see you and Myron and, and uh, Terry Lawler's first match ever in his hometown against one of his wrestling kids, Chip Day. What a match that was. Yeah. Um, you know, it was funny. Um, Terry's, like I said, I've known Terry since high school. By the way, um, shameless plug here. I actually, as we're recording this Wednesday, I released that match today oh. on our YouTube channel. So it is on the YouTube channel to watch. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, I, look, and I, and I told somebody, uh, my wife asked me about it, you know, and I was like, because she was there. Um, she loves Terry as well. Um, and she kind of asked me, she goes, so how was the thing? And I was like, yeah, I will lie to you. I was choked up. Yeah. during his entrance because I was like, look, I, I played a very, and I mean, and I promise you I'm playing, you know, a very small part in that happening. But even to be that small of a part in that happening was like, dude's been wrestling for 34 years. Never had it. He actually was booked once. They were going to run a show in that town and they canceled the show. Mm. So he hadn't gotten to wrestle in his hometown in 34. He literally, like I said, they, they were talking about it. Five minutes up the road is where he grew up. And he got to have that moment in his hometown. And I want to say kudos, one, to Disruptor for helping, you know, make it happen. Two, um, he could not, and everybody laughs, he could not have had a better opponent, in my opinion, than, than Chip. Um, by the way, I'm working on a new nickname for Chip. It is your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, Chip Day. Yes, yes. Um, 
And uh, but then you know, and then of course, all you know, disruptor like I said, letting it happen, you know, helping make it happen and stuff. So, and I think the fans for making the moment live up to what I you know thought he had hoped it would be, and it and it clearly did. I've had multiple conversations with him since then, and it it a hundred percent delivered. Yeah, it was it was a really cool uh, night. Uh, disruptor returns to the Tannery Row L House uh, March twenty third. Mm -hmm. uh lots going on that night uh personally and professionally uh but you can check them out uh disruptor wrestling on all the social media but i would encourage you that's a it's a great listen we we had a good meal you had some great wings while we're watching wrestling and you don't get that it's, it's yeah. more than a hot dog and a popcorn uh yeah and that wasn't you know it wasn't just nachos it wasn't just you know yeah it was a legit you could get i mean they had a full menu on the vip so i would tell you buy your vip and get the table and get the full menu and anyway but yeah great i can't speak highly enough about the disruptor show so yeah thanks to myron for for buying my dinner i appreciate that that was unexpected yeah, that was a plus <laughs> yeah uh so let's get into uh, again this show is is in development it's forming we're doing different things uh one thing i want to do every show is Top three things you're looking forward to. Like over the next couple of weeks, what are some things that we're looking forward to as far as shows or, or what we're doing? Uh, so my first one is IWE's Never Say Die. Uh, and I don't know, can we make the announcement that you and I will both be in attendance that night? Uh, yes, the two of us for sure will be there. And by the way, today, Myron may be there. So we might all three be making the trip. But uh, yeah, for me and you for sure, are going to be there. Something bad would have to happen for me not to show up at this point. But yeah, so I'm, I'll be there as well. Yeah. And, um, we're, um, looking to, I want to connect you with the garden city grappling crew down there in Augusta, some good, good people. And, uh, anytime good wrestling fans get together to watch some good wrestling, that's good. The question is, can IWE sell out again? They, they standing room only sent people away at the door. And here's a question too. You and I have been following a lot of wrestling social media here over the last month or since we started this show. Mm -hmm. One thing I made note of over the last week, over the last seven days from, from the 21st, we're recording this on 28th. IWE has lost about 5,000 Twitter followers. They've gone from about 15.8 down to about 10.9. That's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, they have a ton. Of, they have probably more Twitter followers than any other Georgia promotion. Georgia promotion. They've lost more Twitter followers this week than a lot of promotions even have. So how did they? I know they've been really focusing on their social media. They're growing their social media. They're growing their YouTube channel. Can they kind of rebound uh, again? Ten point nine Twitter followers is is tremendous. Let me ask you this: There's a probably a yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the death word here for a lot of people. Maybe behind the paywall, there's a there's a there's an audio or a video that I think we have a conversation with. One, do I even think that matters? Yeah, there's there's the kicker, right? Everybody's going to be like, "Oh, they think it's a big deal." I don't know that it matters. And maybe no, right. we do. There's there's a, there's like I said that audio. Maybe we cut that when we're done here, and I'll explain why because it's so deep. It's it's we can't get into it on the show. Yeah. Yeah, I I I'm just saying that. As a statement, I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent. Just saying, hey, this is what's yeah. happened over the last uh, last seven days. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so we're excited for that. That's coming up March the 9th. Just, just confirmed uh, in the last 24 hours this Saturday, my very first Southern Fried show. Uh, I need to go back and watch the last show. Get caught mm -hmm. up on everything. Uh, Nick, as someone who's never been to a Southern Fried show, what do I need to get from the snack bar? What what do I what am I what can I expect? I, I do, it's funny as 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 crazy as it sounds, I typically don't do a ton of concession like from play. It's nothing <laughs> knock on other day. Uh but I will tell you this. They will occasionally I don't know if he's going to this show, uh David will do uh barbecue. Oh. Uh occasionally at Southern Fried. So if he does that's definitely, you know, a hit that I would tell you to get. Um, so, but typically it's, you know, they, it's your typical hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, candy, you know, popcorn, 
you know, that kind of stuff. It's your typical, and they do nachos and stuff like that. But, um, so, but. Well, let, let me just throw this out there, David. You do, do barbecue, I will buy at least three plates. And uh, I'll take care of Nick and Myron, and, and we'll make sure we take care of some barbecue. So please hook us up with that. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, what, uh, have they announced any matches? For the, I mean, I'm sure they have. I mean, I'm kind of behind those uh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've done the whole card. Uh, I know your main event is uh, Will Caution versus Billy Buck in a cage for the Classic Championship. That part I do know. I know that one off the top of my head. Um, and so you can share your thoughts on that for a second. And I could literally, I've got it pulled up. Yeah. Um, Xavier Reyes, Adrian Hawkins, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, mm. This is going to be, by the way, I, look, not, not taking anything away from a cage match as a main event. But Nick Kalen versus CT Keys is definitely one you want to keep your eye on because you know, everybody knows my thoughts on Nick Kalen. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite, yeah. absolute favorite wrestlers in Georgia and CT Keys. You know, Myron has a saying where he looks like a wrestler. Yeah. There, there, there aren't yeah. many in Georgia that you point at more than CT Keys and go, like, literally, for the point that I was for, for a long time was saying, I don't understand why he's not on more shows. Like, I could not understand it for yeah. a long time. So I can't remember the first time I saw. You know what? I think I saw CT Keys at like the SCI, like the Futures Tournament or somewhere, and I was like, "Oh my word!" Um, and uh, he, one of the cool things I like about Southern Fried, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, CT Keys is now one half of the tag team champions. Yeah. Southern Fried by running every other week, it gives them space where that there's not. They don't have to have a title match. They can, they've got Correct. space to, they can do a singles match with one of their tag team champions. Mm -hmm. Of course, the other half of the tag team champions is their heavyweight champion. Um, so I, I could not, I'm very, very excited. Uh, I actually bought tickets to a Southern Fried show years ago when uh, Charles was still living and something happened at the last minute. I wasn't able to go. So I'm excited to finally get down there to Mon Monroe, Georgia. Um, uh, the other one on the card is, uh, I don't know, have you ever seen uh, one of the other matches I knew you would probably get into uh, is uh, your girlfriend's favorite wrestler, Hunter James, is on the card. And he's, <laughs> and he's wrestling uh, Matt Sells. Oh, wow. I've never seen either of those guys live. So, man, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Hunter is still, you know, as no matter what I think of him and his personality, everybody knows my stance on him. Uh, it Look, there's somebody out there who loves it when I just say, look, he's a prick and he knows it. Um, and he, he exemplifies it everywhere he goes. Uh, and if you haven't seen Matt Sells in person, it's as entertaining as it comes. Like that's the whole, the whole character is it's, it's entertainment. It is the epitome of sports entertainment versus, you know, um, which is kind of ironic that is one of his home bases is action, right? That that's right. Kind of funny that, that that works that way, but you know, uh, the third thing I'm looking forward to, uh, also on March 23rd, is the Mason Andrews Mason Andrews mm -hmm. Appreciation Show at the Royston Dome in Royston, Georgia. It is a star-studded cast of wrestlers from all over the state coming together to put on this special show to show their appreciation to the young man, this young man who did his list of his favorite Georgia wrestlers. Uh, and the question I have is, I'm not able to be there. You're not able to be there. Is this show going to be filmed? We know um, Squared Circle Action Wrestling has been putting up all their matches on YouTube. Yeah. I like how they've been doing it because you don't have to sit through the whole show. It's broken up by match. Um, kudos to them for for you know trying something a little bit different. Um, but I, I'd be very curious if anybody knows get to get with us. And once that show is released, we we absolutely will uh, promote that and get people to see it. Yeah, we're thinking um, because that is also Disruptor's second show that I'd already committed to that. We think Myron's going to try to go to the Mason show, okay. so you know to represent, so we can kind of be all over the place. But that's at that's the plan as of right now. Right. Um, anyway, so the the question that I want to. You know, I want to spend a few minutes on this topic is, okay, if it's being filmed, what's it, what platform is it being filmed for? Now, 
again, I mentioned Squared Circle Action, Southern Fried, uh, I believe pa- uh, Platinum Championship Wrestling. They put their shows on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some promotions in Georgia that are doing that. They're putting their shows on YouTube. They're putting them on Facebook. Uh, we know Action, Southern Honor, IWE, Viral. They're all on IWTV. The question I have for you is, in 2024, what's the smart play for most Georgia promotions about? I mean, you've got to, let's be clear, you have to film your show. It needs to be of good mm-hmm. quality, and it needs to have commentary. If you're posting matches without commentary, in 2024, find a different hobby. I'll just say that. Um, but what what do you think is the smart play in 2024? I, I think we, because we kind of discussed this in a little bit, and we've in in other, not the exact wording, but somewhat, it, it was more, I think it's, what's your vision? Mm. Um, I think ultimately that's your biggest problem is what's your vision? Like, what do you want, what do you want to be? Um, right. If you want to be, uh, listen, somebody like Matt Griffin in action. Matt Griffin's not a Georgia promotion, right? Like, he's a national promotion, IWTV is the platform he needs to be on um, and is on for that matter. Um, right. If you want to be uh, like, hey, we're trying to cater to our fan base. We wanted to sell the, our money's in the tickets and blah, 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 well, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then I'm like, yeah, look, I, I'm not saying it's not. A, and this thing, people think when I said that, they're like, oh, you're knocking IWTV. I'm not saying it's a knock in the least. What I'm telling you is I think that it's <laughs> – if it's not what you're trying to accomplish, mm. you know, it's like somebody saying like, oh, well, if we're going to put ours on Twitch, but I'm never going to Twitch it otherwise. I'm right. never going to, st- you know, then why is it on Twitch? Put it on YouTube. That's so because right. people ask me all the time, you should do Twitch, not YouTube. And I'm like, why? I'm like, I-, I don't do anything else on Twitch, but I can do stuff on YouTube. I watch YouTube. I think our fan base is on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. So same principle when it comes. So if you're somebody like, Southern Fright, they do YouTube. Why? Because their fan base can watch YouTube. Their fan base, and typically, and it's, by the way, it's because a lot of it's not a knock on the fan base. That's not a fan base who pays nine ninety nine for an independent wrestling streaming right. service. Because guess right. what? They're Southern Fried fans. Right. Right. They're they're not action fan. And I don't mean that as a he's saying they like right. their local promotion, so cater to that promotion. And right. I think that's why when you're making the case of what should you be on. Typically, I would say YouTube, because you can share that on Facebook, by the way. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, but yeah. getting behind a 999 IWTV, like, I'm not, you know, anyway, but go ahead. Sorry. I, yeah, I think, um, I think that um, one of the things with the streaming is you have to, there's not a lot of money in streaming. There's not. Um so you have to figure out how can you use the streaming to bring more fans mm-hmm. to your live shows. That's how you need to be right. uh, thinking. And um, I just don't, I just don't know that the, anybody's put a lot of thought uh, into into that. Um, uh, as someone who used to own a wrestling streaming network, and the platform we were on was called Pivot Share. Pivot Share was bought out by a larger company for their proprietary software that ran the the network, and then uh, was shut down. Um, and that's what High Spots was on. AML used to be on that network. Um, so there's opportunity for somebody to do something new and fresh that nobody else is doing. And we talked about this last night. Very rarely do I sit down and watch a two, two and a half hour independent wrestling show from start to finish. So give it to me in a way, give wrestling fans the content in a way they want to consume it. Shorter. That's right. Shorter. um, I think that's the way to go. If you think I'm wrong, answer the question of why do you think there's so many young people that watch Raw, SmackDown, and stuff on youtube clips or they watch it on hulu the next day with a lot of the stuff chopped out there's your answer that that's why they are watching it shorter so putting up a three hour like here's the thing i'm blunt i'll go watch a three hour show it's really tough for me to sit there and watch a three hour show that's not a wwe pay-per-view production yes yes uh 100 percent 
hundred uh, percent. So those were our thoughts. Hey, like like Nick said, tapped out, uh, tapped out pod at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know. Hey, what are there streaming service streaming services for wrestling we don't even know about that you're subscribed to? We would love to hear uh, your thoughts on that. Oh, I'm sure uh, we'll get a lot of the triller push, but you know the fight slash triller now. A lot of people talk about that one, and I'm like, okay, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually looked into fight. To see, okay, what um, if we share our stuff with you? Kind of what's the, you know, how does all that work? But um, so we talked about some of the shows we're hitting this weekend. Uh, another show that it's that's maybe that's a maybe, but it's a big show, and it's UWF's uh, last show there in Colbert, Georgia. Um, why is losing a promotion like UWF? Why do you think that's really a loss? For Georgia wrestling, uh, it's funny we we teased it a little bit. This conversation we teased on the national show, and I was telling people like, "Hey, if you listen to the show, come check this out because it's a deeper conversation." Because I think it is a deeper conversation. And by the way, I teased it when I split UWF last show question uh, mark. Mm-hmm. That being said, like it's their last show, and I was like, "Is it though?" Right. Like, it's like a wrestling <laughs> retirement, right? Like, is it though? Right. Uh, time will tell by the way, but let's say, let's take it for the, for the sake of it is their last show and they're done for, they're not going to run anymore. Um, I think what our case has always been about promotions like UWF. Uh, we both left that, you know, we went to one of the shows together and we both left that show going, that was a good little show. Like it was, it's not like, Hey, they've got all this production. Uh, they've got, all the big names coming in. That's not what they do. No. Uh, UWF is the epitome of something. It was funny. You taught me this phrase. They stay in their lane. They know who they are and what they are. They embrace that and they do it to the best of their abilities. And I think they do a great job of that. Yeah. They don't um, try to be something that they're not. Right. Like you, I, when you see promotions that are like, Hey, we are limited in our skill set. By the way, this is something to learn in real life. I have a limited skill set in this department. The last thing I want to do is go out and try to do something that centers around that skill set. Like, okay, let's make it where we're really good at this and do that. Right. Um, and I think one of the strengths that they have, uh, as far as like, why is it important? Why is it important? And why is it losing it a bad thing for Georgia? There are guys, and you talked about, you know, the tiers of wrestling, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And we're not saying they're a lower tier, but in the sense of it is a place where guys get an opportunity to grow and develop, not in the, uh, you know, the bigger level of some of these promotions where if this guy's his third match and he's not good, he may not recover. The fans may be like, oh, boo, he sucks. But right. you go there and they're like, hey, he's developing. and uh, But at the same time, they're smart enough, in my opinion, to, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, they're smart enough to go out and get a guy like Curtis Coleman, Nick Halen, mm. Jacob Ashworth, you know, guys who've been around a long time and are really good in a ring and can make those kids better. Because I think the worst thing you can do sometimes at these promotions is put two trainees and two young guys in there. Like, hey, you got to put somebody in there that's going to make them better. And mm. UWF does that. So that's why I, my stance is losing a company like that is bad for George overall. Yeah, I, I was thinking about um, I was thinking about our conversation today, and you think back, um, you know, we had Ole Anderson that passed had passed away, and at one point, Ole's booking Georgia, and he's booking Crockett, and back then, guys were working seven days a week. You were wrestling seven days a week, no matter your level. You were wrestling seven days a week. Guys are lucky now to wrestle seven times a month. It, a matter of fact, a, a Georgia wrestler who wrestled seven times a month, man, we would consider that full time. Yeah. So these young guys have to have, and again, I'm not, I don't mean this in a disparaging way at all. You have to have your squared circle actions. You have to have your SWAs. You have to have your UWFs. You have to have those places that willingly and graciously give these young guys opportunities to make mistakes, mm-hmm. to learn, and to get better and move uh, move their way up. I remember, and uh, I remember one night I was at SWA, 
and there was a young man and he had been he'd been wrestling for SWA and a couple other places and he, he and that night he got his first opportunity at anarchy and it was such a big deal and he was busting his butt to get back to SWA and the way that the guys welcomed him when he got there and just the response he got of to them hey man that's a big deal you you've kind of taken you've kind of taken a jump and it was it was cool to be back back stage and, and kind of see that and is uwf gone you know the the main event is is nick halen versus db washington title versus career uh could this be i believe it's db washington cb washington's last match who knows um but yes hopefully there are more places that crop up to give young guys a place to grow a place to learn a place to interact Mm-hmm. with the fans a place to learn that if you're cutting a promo and the fa- and there's a fan on the front row that won't let you get a word out how do you deal with that mm-hmm. and the big one is like you said earlier about the working so many times it's a sunday show yes so you don't have to give up a booking on another show to get another rep in and it was funny because there was a guy and i'm not going to say it was a talent that i even said like dude why do you work a specific it wasn't uwf but it was another show i'm like why do you work that show and they're like, dude, it's a rep, man. It's a rep. Yeah, and I'm like, right. I get it. I think that there comes a day where you're like, okay, now you are more selective. But while you're not, if you can get a Friday booking, a Saturday booking, and a Sunday booking, you're like, okay, if I can get that, I mean, like you said, now you're talking two, four, eight, let, you know, you're like at 10 to 12 bookings a month that you're like, oh, if I can get in a routine, that's a good, that's a good month for a lot, you know, some indie talents. Yes, yes. I, I've always also been an advocate for promotions kind of working together on their schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that's been cool to see is there was a time when Southern Honor and Action were running on the same night a lot. And it, it if I'm not mistaken, it created some heat there. Uh, but now that doesn't happen nearly as often, if ever, anymore. And listen, the more these young wrestlers get the reps, like you said, the more they improve. That's good for everybody yeah. Be- because uh, you can't wrestle forever and you got to build up that next generation of, of talent. Uh, speaking of building up the next generation of talent, uh, and you know more about this gentleman th- uh, than me, and that is Corey Tatum, who's been a photographer. He's been everywhere. He's worked in the news. He's worked the camera, but he's announced that he's retiring. He's he's stepping away. Why is this a big deal for Georgia wrestling? Uh, look, I, I know obviously multiple photographers in Georgia, um, and even the best I think will typically tell you Corey's the best mm. um, when it comes to the photography. I like look. I know Peter would probably nod his head if he's listening right now. Uh, he knows who I'm, you know, and saying like, look, it's. A lot of those early days, those promotional pictures and stuff, like I know Peter does a lot of the promo stuff now, so whatever. It's a it's a shared thing at Southern Honor. But I know a lot of some of these classic shots you've seen from Southern Honor back in the day at uh, AWE, you know, um, some of these classic photos. Those the, the Corey did those. Right. Um, and like I said, it's because you get into – there's a difference between – and, I and look, I, I'm not disparaging anybody because I am the last person when they talk about photography – there are a lot of photographers out there. Hmm. Corey is credentialed as a, like I work for a profession, like a news company, like photography film, you know? And so when somebody like that has to, you know, they're going to walk away and look, I get it. We all get older. I joked about it on the other show. Look, I'm 50 now. So like, you know, there's things that don't work like they used to. Um, and I get it, your knees and your back climbing ladders. And, you know, because if you've ever seen Corey work, He's he's mounting cameras on poles and, you know, he's shooting photography at the same time and he's doing all this. He's a professional's professional. Right. And it, it's going to be a huge thing about like, hey, these promo picks in the back that are really good. There's my thing is wrestlers. You should be getting them Um, when you wonder why your picture looks so bad on a poster. <laughs> it's your fault. There's a guy right. like that that'll take that picture for you. Right, um, right. So now there's one less guy who can do that for you. That's why it's a huge deal. Um, look, there are people that can do it, but it's just one less. And that's why I think it's a huge hit for Georgia. 
Yeah, listen, there is, um, as someone who is, who's video recorded a lot of wrestling shows, uh, there is an eye, there is an art, there is a talent to the photography side of it. Of There's a timing to it of knowing, of kind of having a feel for it, of where to be and being in the right spot. And uh, like you said, there's never enough of these folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so losing a really great one uh, is, is a detriment to, to everybody. Uh, so, hey, Corey, enjoy. Hopefully we'll still see at some shows, uh, but enjoy enjoy your retirement. And, um, yeah, just sit back and enjoy some of the wrestling now. Yeah. Um, so for our next segment, we're, we're trying to think of uh, a name for it. We're, we're going to talk about uh, the heavy, some of the heavyweight champions, and then we want to talk about some of the tag teams and uh, tag team champions in Georgia. And we kind of want to say, okay, who are the top three on a hot streak or, you know, the hot hand? But we need your help in helping us name this segment. Again, we are a brand new show. We're learning as we're going. Uh, but we would love to hear from you, the fans, of what, what was, what's a good name for a segment of acknowledging this person's on a good streak this person is not what do you what are you thinking nick yeah and it's kind of what you're saying is like look tapped out pod gmail.com shoot those in um i think what we're because we're like look it's it, like the hot hands thing kind of struck with me but i'm like hey there's got to be something better uh maybe maybe not <laughs> um but uh let us know it's not necessarily like oh these are your top champions like that's not what we're looking for um, right. like there's a name in my brain right now who's not but I would beg to argue he's probably one of the hottest wrestlers in the state of Georgia right now. Right. Um, so I think that's what we're talking. Like it, it was like, you know, like I had, I've had all kinds of work, you know, play on words like stocks up, stocks down, like who stocks moving, whatever, um, you know, all these kind of things. That's kind of what we're talking. So it'll be, by the way, it might be five. We might end up doing five because we talked about maybe it's not like wrestler. It could be, the hot hand, it could be a promotion, it could be a, a wrestler, it could be a tag team, right. man, whatever. So it could be multiple things. But yeah, send those in, tappedoutpod at gmail.com and let us, if you've got any suggestions or whatever, and we'll kind of have one here as we go forward. So so we want to have a discussion again. We're just going to go through some of the champions uh, that we know of in Georgia. Uh, let's start out with uh, Jadais, Southern Honor, heavyweight champion, Southern Pride. Um, uh, heavyweight champion Nick Halen, Anarchy heavyweight champion. He's also UWF heavyweight champion. Uh, you got Owen Knight. Uh, Viral's coming back April the twentieth. Uh, Owen Knight has been their champion. You feel bad for Owen because he worked so hard. Really was the backbone of Viral mm-hmm. for so long. Got that heavyweight championship opportunity and then had some venue issues. So hoping they can get back on on track. Cruel, he's the IWTV World Heavyweight Champion. I know there were like two belts, but now Cruel's like undisputed champion. Alex Kane, the Action Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Dominic Stuckey, the Wrestle America Heavyweight Champion. Although CB Suave uh, has one of the belts, so there's some dispute there. And then Bryce Cannon, uh, the Larry Otto Heavyweight Champion, in that big match this weekend. Yeah, we'll and listen. About. Slim J is your disruptor champion currently. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, like, look, there's all these, like we can keep going. Look, we, by the way, this is part two of our conversation. Uh, we want to establish a list of yes. the champions, tag team champions at all these promotions. So like, look, we're going to do our part to go out and find them. But if you can help it out, send it in tapped out pot at gmail.com. Who are the champions and the tag champions at your favorite promotions <laughs> and let us know. And we can kind of start tracking it, but we got to like, help get that list built you sent me something um you sent me a thing uh that was from one of the old wrestling magazines and it was the list of champions each promotion it had their picture and i thought dude we need to do that for georgia so if you're listening to this if you're a booker promoter or a wrestler send us hey i'm such and such champion i don't care what promotion it is in georgia send us your picture hey i'm the champion and we're going to create that graphic, and I yeah. think that'd be something. Cool I've been working on it. I have been working on it. Yeah. So absolutely. 
So of those champions we just listed, and you look at that list, and I know we've added a couple since we, you know, we added Bryce, we had Slim J. As you look at that, who's the hot hand? Who's the hot hand in that group we just talked about? So here's the crazy one. He's not even like, <laughs> sorry, this chuckles me to say this, right? I think the hottest hand in Georgia, I'm not saying, because like everybody's like, oh, so you think he's, like, if you were doing awards right now, he'd be your, I didn't say that. I just said he's the, he's on the hottest streak. He's on a heater. He, if he was sitting at a poker table right now, he's the one collecting the most chips. He right. hasn't cashed out yet, but he's collecting the most chips right now. Bryce Cannon? Like, and I know you've got a hot take on, like, what his future holds, like his short-term future holds yeah. for his place on this list. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Bryce Cannon is the guy he's getting out there. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about him in a few minutes. He's got huge match coming up. He's got huge matches coming up just in the next couple of days. Um, and if – so, yeah, I would say Bryce Cannon right now, to me, if I'm looking at January and February, he's had about – the most impressive. Again, are we saying whatever? Rest of the year? I'm just saying, as I have seen him, he's got a lot more impressive wins than he's got devastating losses. And even his loss that we <laughs> saw in person was a phenomenal, like, you're like, okay. And by the way, as we're recording this, it's tomorrow. But if as you're listening to this, it's tonight. It's Thursday night. He's got the chance to, you know, get that back. Yeah, to, to win that Southern States title for Martin Stone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't, I, 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 I'm going to yeah. steal your thunder here because here's, here's what you told me, and I 100% I yeah. agree. Yeah. Can you imagine, we're saying he's on, Bryce Cannon is on a heater right now, and if he can manage to defeat Martin Stone and capture the Southern States title, then go down to Lariato and defend against Matt Cardona and beat, if he can beat Matt Cardona, Come on. It's not even debatable at that point, is it? Well, to you and I, it's not. Right. Oh, there's somebody there, that's going to. I get it. There is somebody out there. There are, other, there are other people out there collecting ballots and doing other things. And sometimes I question if they're even watching or paying attention to wrestling. One of the reasons we started this podcast is in... October and November, we can come back and say, oh, man, you remember how hot Bryce Cannon was in January and February? You remember this? Mm -hmm. He's about, if he can win those two matches, he's about to have a better week than some people have a whole year. No, I, listen, I, I, he, everybody knows, look, it, it goes back to the same thing. Personally, does he do everything? It depends on what, where you're at, right? Right. They love him at Southern States. Everywhere else in the state of Georgia, they hate his guts. <laughs> right, like, right. You know, right. so, uh, but yeah, I just think he's on such a heater right now. I think if you had me starting a list, I probably start there. Um, I don't know if we're, you're going to go here, but I'm going to go ahead and take because one of the conversations right. we always have is what about cruel? Like, cruel, like, okay. Yeah. It, it's funny that I say this, and I, and I know the reaction that one particular person's going to have when I say this. He's just, he's the IWTV world champion. Like, he probably now has more matches in New York and in that corner, you know, the Northeast than he does in Georgia now. He's not a Georgia wrestler anymore. If he was, he's cleaning house. Yeah. But he's not at this point. I, you know, like, yes, he's, if I were saying, like, he counted, he's right there on the top of all of my list. But he's not. He's not being punished, folks. I'm telling you, he's bigger than Georgia now. So I, I want to take cruel off the table because I always get pushed back on that when we make these lists or we talk just in conversations and we don't mention him. I'm like, dude, that's because I don't think of him that way. And isn't he back with MLW now? Yes. On a, yes. It, so, um, yeah, there you go. That's enough said right there. Yeah. I think all, everyone we mentioned on that champions list uh, is at the top of their game in those promotions. And uh, we're making lists so we, just so we can keep track of who's doing what and why they're doing it. And, hey, can you 
all these guys, you're the champion in February. Where are you going to be in December? That's a, that's a big question. Right. Let's talk about same thing. Let's talk about some of these tag team champions. You've got Sal, Renaro, Seth Delay, Anarchy tag team champions. Exo I think Exotic Youths, the Southern Honor champions. I, I don't know when that's going to be cleared up. Maybe it's them. Maybe it's the grapplers. Who knows? The hierarchy, Joe Black and Murder One are there in IWE. Uh, Kevin Ryan and Shug D, the good hand, they're action wrestling tag team champions. Judas and CT Keys are the Southern Fried tag team champions. And then uh, TJ Ball, Suki King, the viral pro tag team champions. I wasn't able to get a lot of the other. Y'all need to make it wrestling promotions. You need to make it easier to find out who your champions are. I shouldn't have to like get a search warrant and uh, use all my skills to try to figure yeah. stuff out. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's the struggle bus there. Sometimes it's just getting some of this information. Uh, look, we're going to make a, we, we are going to make the commitment that we're going to try but like I should literally, um, I told somebody this. Listen, promotions. I, I know you have your you have a profile and you have a cover on Facebook, so you've got two. Um, how about making one of the picture like your champions or something? Yeah, I think Pro South did that at one point. They, they had a did. Graphic. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, or so or as, a pin or a pin post. You can make some. You know, you can pin it to the top of your thing. So put who your champions are, make a graphic or something like that, uh, just because then at least your fans know. I mean, that's not even just for us, but I, I kind of dig that as an option. But Yeah. Um, as you look at this list of tag teams, uh, and we, we asked this, what promotion is really hot right now? And I would say the same thing about these, these tag teams. Uh, you know, Hierarchy, they've had a couple of good title defenses. Uh, exotic you just won those titles same thing with judias and ct keys tj ball suki king i don't think they may have had one successful title defense because yeah. of the, the 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 break there for viral um i would say this this is something that is wide open for the take it notice the grapplers on on there you know they were um you know they were part of my power five a few weeks ago and they they've kind of hit some rough waters well but that could be debatable because are they the Southern Honor Tag Team Champions? If they are, you're like, are they? Or are they not? But this, so this is the epitome of the category in my take of where I would come in and say, like, we talked about, like, look, just because you're not the champions doesn't mean you're the hot hand. Right. Uh, here's the irony. You ready for this? What's that? I'm about to tell you something that I never thought would come out of my mouth. Mm. Does the exotic you sweeping this entire across the... Bryce Cannon's the hot hand that we think of in the singers wrestlers. And is there any hotter tag team all over Georgia? Cause they wrestle everywhere folks. I hate that they wrestle anywhere and everywhere. And by the way, when they're there, they ain't, they're not curtain jerking. No, they're up the card. So did I just say in one, I'm about to, I was literally about to say, is there any hotter tag team than exotic youth in Georgia? And then my brain says, Nick, you just picked Bryce Cannon as the hot, you know, one of the hottest hands. And does that mean exotic youth is like the hottest hand, period, across Georgia? So if we were making our list, like, you know, when we get to this format of five, is it exotic youth as a whole, like the mm -hmm. hottest hand? Because they're talking like they're they're taking by the way, it's not just Bryce. Zach's kind he's going, he's chasing, he's the you know, he's chasing titles at promotions as well. I think he's got a he's got a match coming up with Skrilla at Deep South. Mm, wow! You know, so yeah. I mean, so and I know he was real big at the uh, when KLT was running. He was at the top. So are they? Is it? <laughs> my brain's about to. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Right, going to give these guys credit. Exotic youth, like, are they potentially the hottest hand? Period in Georgia. I, listen, if you're looking for me to push back on you, you're not going to get. It. Think about this. Obviously, there was the split between KLT and Primetime Wrestling. But at KLT's hottest, at their peak, who was right there? It was Zach Mosley. It was yeah. Exotic Youth. And when they kind of were there less, I'm just saying, does KLT, I mean, I think KLT is kind of, they've kind of merged with NAWA. Uh, yeah, listen, you're not going to get 
any argument for me. We're going to see uh, exotic youth down there at IWE here uh, in a couple of weekends. And uh, I'm excited, of course, save that for about 20 seconds and we'll talk a little more about that. So, <laughs> hey, fans, let us, again, we want to hear tappedoutpod at gmail.com. We need a name for this kind of segment. And, we, hey, who, who do you think is the hot hand singles tag team? promotion who do you think hey this is who uh, you know i this uh, who i think's hot right now and can they keep up the momentum uh which leads me into i i've done my power five again again this is kind of the broad ranging thing and and number five for me i just mentioned exotic youth at iwe so number five for me is iwe can they sell out again they just announced this morning as we're recording uh colby carino is going to be there but they announced Buff and Fluff, the Buff and Fluff connection, Sean Legacy and Fluff Man versus Exotic Youth in tag team action. Sign me up. This, I believe this is the first time this match has taken place. This is going to be absolutely incredible. You got the athleticism, you got the entertainment value. Mm-hmm. Um, you've talked about Fluff Man and, and his start there at Southern Honor. What are you expecting from this tag team match? Uh, I I think it has, like you said, it's got everything wrapped into one match where, look, we know how entertaining the youth can be. Fluffman has completely come on strong out of nowhere, it felt like. I know he's been at Viral and some other places, but he's just kind of exploded on the scene everywhere else. So and between, And then, of course, you've got Legacy, who's as talented as anybody physically in the ring. And yes, Bryce and, you know, look, whether you love them or not, Bryce can, and, you know, Zach can go out there and do that as well. So I think you're going to have, be able to action in the ring, entertainment in the ring. So it'll, it'll deliver, I'm sure. And IWE has been doing these different rules because Cornelius Pepperbottom, this is basically going to be a two on three match. If it, if it holds true to what they've done in the past, they've also got two women's matches uh, IWE has really committed to their women's division more so than any other prom- uh, promotion in Georgia, not just to have kind of like a token championship match, but now adding another match. You got Lindsey Snow and Danny Jordan in a tables match. Uh, then you got a triple threat. I'm sure the winner of that triple threat is going to get a title right. shot. Yeah. The big thing is they're doing this contract signing. So the, uh, the hierarchy won the war games. And so, James Caleb Kitchens is getting control of IWE from Tim Blackman. They're going to sign a contract, which normally you sign that contract before the match. So this is a little bit different. Uh, and I also want to circle back to something I was talking about earlier. I mentioned IWE had lost 5,000 Twitter followers in the last week. I also want to say, because I don't want to be misquoted, I don't want to be misconstrued, that since we started this show, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, they'd grown 5,000. When we started this, they were about 5,000 followers, and they're right. up to 10. So I want to – please hear me. I want to give total credit uh, for that. They're definitely growing, and I think they've got some uh, – uh, they've been tweeting out IWE Wednesday. They've made, they're have they making talent announcements today. So I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, kind of what's next for IWE. Uh Number four on my power five is is a promoter and promotion, and that's Gary Lamb and Southern Honor. Gary Lamb was on my power five last time. You got coming up Chip Day versus Adam Priest. Um, has that match happened anywhere yet? Uh, not you, that I'm aware of. You got the hierarchy versus the end game, and you and you and I know some stuff that that's going on behind the scenes. And Gary is about to get into a different gear. And as everybody knows, Gary has multiple businesses. He's got the fight league. He's got wrestling. He's got the events. And he's pretty fired up right now. And in a way that I don't know that we've ever seen Gary Lamb in Georgia wrestling. Uh, And so all bets are off as far as what Southern honor is going to push. But I think, I think just a lot of things are coming together and they're about to kick butt. I, I told somebody the other day, 
there's a time and there is and people laugh the people were like are you sure about that i'm like look there's a time you can mess with gary and he'll mess back with you yeah um right now is not the time no no um look i it's it's I always tell people it's not my place to divulge secret sometimes that's right. becoming a developing theme um but i will tell you people like that story shall be told at some point i'm sure uh but right now he is not a happy gary lamb on all fronts uh so if you're going to start poking the bear right now be warned yes you might not want to do that um stay in your lane and do you for now yes worry about your show worry yeah. about your business um yeah. let me also say unrelated to gary and you and you and i are navigating some kind of new waters with this show is we do get a lot of we get a lot of information and there's actually a story we're holding off today to see what develops because we, we we just think that's the responsible thing to do yeah and we may not even talk about it in two weeks but we might and <laughs> um and we would probably be the only show talking about it uh but that's a that's kind of a fun thing and a negative thing about doing this is you yeah. kind of have a responsibility uh to be right to be right at least have all the information yes yes yeah. yes yes um third on my power five is the nightmare factory so last month it was turnbuckle but turnbuckle they they haven't had any follow-up announcements. they had that tremendous show it was great they got a great vision we talked about it but we haven't seen any follow-up but everywhere we go every single promotion we go to in georgia what do we hear that's a nightmare kid. That's a nightmare kid. That's a nightmare ring. This is a nightmare person. Their connections are going everywhere. And we are seeing nightmare factory kids wrestle more outside of Georgia than they wrestle inside of Georgia. And I think, I think there's uh, even bigger things on the horizon. Um, I, I'll kind of stop right there. Um, but there's also, um, you know, we were talking about last night when you, there's certain people you book from the nightmare factory and it entitles you to other things from the nightmare factory. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we were at, like disruptor. Uh, I made a point to walk over. I had never seen Ivy Malibu in person. Mm. And I'm like, dude, she's, she's from my understanding was relatively new, young, yes. you know, starting in the business. Um, I just wanted to say, Hey, walked over, introduced myself and say, Hey, I've heard a lot of great things about you. Just wanted to meet you. Say it's got, you know, and then after the show, I was like, like, Oh, wow. Like, you know, get it. Like there's a lot to be said for that is her God given talents and abilities that she's doing in the ring. But the nightmare factory probably had a lot to do with help bringing that along and giving some opportunities. And so think of how quick and young she is that she's already being booked all over the country and not just in Georgia because like you think it has anything to do with connections? Maybe just saying. And you, you and I have been to a lot of wrestling shows. We've been backstage at a lot of wrestling shows. Ivy carried herself in a professional way. Yeah. More so than I've seen some wrestlers who've been in 10, 15 years she she carried herself presented herself a certain way why wouldn't you book her yeah uh she's she's only going to get better and 100%. i would be i would be I'd be very surprised if in two years time she she's not signed somewhere so uh they're just going to keep growing and keep doing great things uh number two he's down a notch but that's okay it's bryce cannon again he wrestles martin stone February 29th for Southern States. He could become that Southern States champion. He wrestles Matt Cardona. He defends the Larry Otto Pro Wrestling heavyweight title against him. Bryce did reach out. Their shows, the Larry Otto shows, are on Impact Plus. Uh, but we're also looking for other ways to get that that footage. If Bri I can tell you this. If Bryce Cannon wins both I can of those get us matches, that show. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. When... when if Bryce Cannon wins both of those matches in two weeks' time when we're back here, he's going to be number one in my power five. And I don't know, or 
He's going to be no, he's going to be number one in about er, everything if he can pull Listen, off. He could go that. one for one, like one and one, and he still might be number one. Yes, yes. Uh, here's the thing. He could go zero and two. Who else is getting booked against this level of talent? And obviously, when you bring in Matt Cardona, you bring in a Martin Stone. You're booking them. You're paying them. They are there to do a job. They're there to do what you ask them to do. But when you have those relationships, they don't want to just work any Joe Blow off the street. So for them to say, oh, yes, 100%, I'll work Bryce Cannon, it's a big thing. That's a big stamp of approval. Yeah, I've got a side note. Remind me once you're done, because we still have number one left. Because we're yeah. like, wait a minute, Nick, you're – you praised Exotic Youth. You praised Bryce Cannon, and he's number two? Well, yeah, because number one. Number one is Action Wrestling and Matt Griffin. Matt Griffin was in the Power Five last time. I've added Action Wrestling. They are they're doing multiple shows a month in Georgia, plus all the crossover stuff where Matt Griffin is showing up. Every, Matt Griffin may be at UWF and Colbert this Sunday for all <laughs> we know at this point. Would not surprise me. But what other Georgia promotion has a Mania Week show in, and they're doing their show in New Jersey? No one else is even thinking like that. Right. But that's the mind, again, that's the different mindset yes. and the partnerships uh, that Action Wrestling has through IWT TV and others. And that's going to be some of that Georgia talent getting a platform on a national stage in front of fans from all around the world. Um, now, I'll also say, do I think that Mania Week, at one point, it was ridiculously diluted. And, you know, there's like 10 people at this show, at 20. But it's still a big deal. Um, it's a big deal to the wrestlers. And as someone who watches, it's a big deal. I'm happy for all those people. But Action Wrestling and Matt Griffin, to me, number one on the Power Five. And look, I always say if you're number one, don't get too comfortable because you got to think about this. If my dates, are, and I'm going to pull the calendar up to make sure because I like to be right, mm. we won't record this show until again until the 13th. Right. We're going to see a Southern Fried show, a Southern Honor show, an IWE show. There's going to be multiple, like, you know, there's going to be Southern States Pro, Action's going to run. I mean, UWF slash show is going to – think about all of the wrestling in the next two-week window mm -hmm. about how much of a shakeup that could be in anything. Like, we could come back next week or in two weeks and it literally just be completely – the landscape has changed. Because, look, now I'm going to be fair. Because we said this off the air. We've always said we'll be critical but fair. Mm. We – I may, and actually, I'm going to change my thought. Here's the crazy thing. I actually just had something pop into my head. I'm going to surprise you. We were saying, like, is there any promotion right now that we would be like, they have a hot hand as far as promotion goes? At right. first, I was going to say, I didn't think anybody was at a point where you could say they were hot. Like, they have a crazy buzz right now. That doesn't mean they're not, there's nobody that's running good shows. We're right. just talking about, like, we somebody that's standing head and shoulders above everybody else. If you're talking about just who's got more momentum than they had in a long time and they were like in a really good place, you could make the case for Southern States Pro. Yes. After yes. that tournament we saw, and then you know, they're now they're got their back in Atlanta, and then they're gonna be back at, so you could make a case for them, and I will I will be fair to say that. Um, especially putting Martin Stone at the top of their at the top of their, you know, their food chain. And I am sure we need to go ahead and put this in the notes. They've announced their tournament of 16. Yes. Uh, that they're doing that. I definitely want to spend some time on the thing with Southern States. And again, we've said this off air. They've got some momentum. And when you have momentum, you have to be very careful. Like if you get hot in basketball, you can take some three pointers. You can do a heat check shot. But you still got to take a layup if it's there. Yeah. And you can't just start heaving from half court. And so that's what's going to be interesting to see is can they maintain – because 
Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment, this this group, they have been hot before. Yeah. So can they maintain it? That's a, that's a great Eric call. Bischoff has a – he repeatedly says on 83 Weeks, momentum is a funny thing. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to get it, and it's really even more difficult to keep it. Yeah. Because if you lose momentum, it's hard to get it back again. So – The thing about momentum is you have, and this is, you have to be self-aware enough to realize when you're starting to lose momentum. Mm -hmm. So you can make adjustments. Most of the time, whether it's in life, business, wrestling, we're not self-aware enough until it's too late, until like you're just kind of off the rip. I want you to think about this. From the time Hogan joined the NWO to the the death of WCW, AEW has already been around longer than that. Right. There was a great debate about that. That's a, that might be a topic of you know on a, on a separate like Patreon video or whatever. Because yes, um, I can't remember what podcast. It was probably eighty three weeks. I'm not going to lie. It's probably eighty three weeks. When he sat there and made the point, uh, Conrad Thompson brought up the point. When people are surprised at the, like, why is AEW, like, they look, they're on a downslide for now. They can turn it around. Yeah. I'm not saying they can't. He's like, the it's eerily comparatively to the time of the NWO taking off till the momentum was dead and it was it was running out of steam. It's about the same window. Yeah. And he's like, that's what happens. You can get so hot that you lose focus that you thought everything was great. And by the mm-hmm. way, that's indie wrestling for you, by the way. I can't <laughs> I can't tell you in the last seven years when I've looked back and said, this promotion has momentum, and then they just lose it, and somebody else gets yeah. it, and somebody else gets it. And, you know, it's it's difficult to get back. That's for sure. Think about the number of promotions – I think a peach states one there's others who were promotion of the year within the last 10 years that are no longer, no longer even exist. Yeah. Um, so it's, it can be here one day gone tomorrow. So we would love, Hey, tapped out pot at gmail.com. What's your power five? Who do we leave out? Why are we totally wrong about what we said about the power five? Uh, or if you're a promoter listening, it's like, Hey, Heath, you had this fact wrong. Hey, Send us the correction. Send us, let us, let us. And know listen, it's happened. It's already happened. And we, you know, uh, Phoenix reached out and said, Hey, you had a couple things that you, it wasn't, I don't think we were wrong. We just didn't know. Right. And they're yes. like, Hey, yeah. we got some, so, you know, we let you know. Um, and we're all for that. Like, Hey, come on. We'll let, we'll give you a platform to even, you know, say like, Hey, we want to get this out there. That's what we're here for. The eventual thing. And I mentioned this on, uh, maybe on our last show, but I know I mentioned it on one of our, uh, the national shows as well. Uh, the thought process is, is the gap in between us recording, like mm-hmm. for this episode, like the weeks in between, it's a great platform to have somebody, a promoter, come on a talent, come on, you know, something like, Hey, we can do something a little bit different. Um, I just didn't want to do this show every week just from the sake of, some weeks we don't have, like there's just right. aren't a whole lot of shows. And it's like, what are we really going to talk about? You know? So right. it's a struggle. Um, so it's like, Hey, let's do this every two weeks. And maybe the weeks in between, we can have a platform for some people to get out there and work on that. And we are going to get better at that. Like we're going to fit, you know, get better at that process um, right. and setting those things up. So definitely reach out. I've, I've got a few, I already know who they are. Um, so we'll be getting those uh, in the works here shortly. So listen, fans, the way to get, all of the content, most of it is released to the public, is to go to our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash tapped out pod. There's different tiers. A lot of the stuff, you get it early. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's not, re- like I said, it's not going to be released publicly that you can get there by going to Patreon. Most of the stuff, this show, the national show, is always uh, going to be free, um, despite what other people may say. You know, we're not hiding everything behind a paywall. Uh, but if you want it early, you can get it there. Also, subscribe on YouTube, turn those notifications on. And everywhere you listen to podcasts, you see them there. So many 
all basically every single podcast app search for tapped out pod uh, tapped out podcast uh make sure you subscribe like it download it anything you can do helps that algorithm helps those statistics and uh gets us closer and closer and closer to podcast domination which is uh which is the end goal absolutely man make sure you also by the way this is not something this is kind of me throwing it out there um would you see some of the new logos and stuff the new shirts are up pro wrestling tees uh, i'll be sharing a, there's a code coming up here soon they're going to do a uh, merch madness sale or something like i can't remember the name of it um and there's going to be a code where you actually be able to get 20 percent off your order uh if you order over 150 dollars and you get uh say it's 20 percent off and orders over 150 get free shipping. So, and by the way, that's not like prowrestlingtees.com. You can support all your other favorite independent wrestlers who are there as well. They're all there. So, buy a bunch of shirts and get them for free shipping. Hey, we mentioned sending us ideas for the for the segment, the hot hand segment. Whoever we pick is the winner. I'm going to pay and we're going to send you the tapped out wrestling shirt of your choice. We'll make it a little contest. Won't be rigged. Awesome. It won't be won't be like that show where they took money up for the fifty fifty and never did a drawing. <laughs> it happens, man. They got busy. They were just distracted. It's all um, good. Yeah, but definitely, like I said, make sure you're you know doing all that good stuff because I think we do need to do that social media when maybe uh, behind the wall and uh, that's a good conversation that I think we can do. So I um, think that would be a lot of yeah. Fun. That's great, man. What uh. Hey. If you're out at the shows this weekend, please come. I, I, Nick and Myron know all the Georgia people, all the fans. I haven't met many of you. I don't bite. I'm the. I'm very friendly. Would love to meet you. I'll sign an autograph for free. I'll take a picture. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. I mean, I will sign an autograph for free, but you don't want my autograph. Uh, but Nick, another great episode under the belt. I feel like we're getting better. I feel like we're doing well. Uh, fans. We could not do the show without your support. So thank you for listening to Tapped Out Indie Wrestling. And make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you in two weeks.